Hello. Hello, Dickie James. How are you? <laughs> Hello, I'm very well. How are you? Good. God, you're all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Oh, I'm, I'm really not. Yeah, well, you're looking at it, Jamie. A bit better than last week, anyway. What was it looking like last week? I can't remember. <laughs> you were in a hotel room. Oh, yes, of course. Dosed up to the eyeballs. <laughs> I was. So that's why I can't I take remember. Feeling a little better. Yeah, yeah, just a little, little tickle in the, uh, in the throat, in the chest, but it's fine. Oh, good. Yeah. Bless you. Anyway, are you, are you, and you're looking well, also. Am I? Yeah, looking dapper well, in your well lam- lumberjack yes, well, shirt. Uh, well, actually, it's a certain look I've gone for here because I've got an audition, you see. Oh. And when you have an audition, they very often ask you to kind of try and look or dress. Something like the part that you're auditioning for. So, are you are you auditioning for a lumberjack role? A zombie. <laughs> and as no, we know, seriously. zombies are big fan fans of check shirts. So, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, actually, the funny thing is, I know what they'll ask me. They always ask when you go out for roles like this. It's, it's for a commercial, and they always say, "Do you have any experience working with prosthetic makeup?" Ah, and of course, I mean, you can say. I don't know I if you've no idea who I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if you've seen uh, Jerry Anderson's Space Precinct. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that'll be fun, won't it? Uh, well, I'm very excited for you. Uh, in which case, do we need to get on with it so you can get to your audition? Well, uh, I think perhaps we ought. Okay. The zombie awaits. Uh, fine. Uh, well, on that note, it's the <laughs> Jerry Anderson podcast, Pod 44. Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Jerry Addison podcast. This is pod number, just scrolling back to the top of my script, 44. 44. You're lucky I amended it because sometimes I forget to change the number at the top. You do. That's right. Um, this is uh, our opportunity and your opportunity for the next uh, hour and a half or so to uh, talk things uh, of Jerry Anderson, Thunderbird E, Space 1999 E, <laughs> Space Precinct E, Secret Service E, it, Captain Scarlet E. Investigator E. No, no. <laughs> Crossroads to Crime E. Yeah. We must do a feature on Crossroads to Crime at some point. OK. It, it, well, go yeah. on then. Don't look at me. Well, I, I mean, there's not much I to say about Chris it. Dale, up. Yeah, Chris Dale. We're, it'll be over to you at some <laughs> point. I, I, he, he must have included that in his randomizer selection. Anyway, look, who are you? Well, I'm Richard James. Who are you? Jamie Anderson. Oh, well, it all makes sense now, because you, of course, are Jerry Anderson's son. Yes, and you, of course, are uh, an Olivier-nominated... Actor, playwright, <laughs> prosthetic makeup wearer, and potential zombie. You're right. You're absolutely right. So, welcome one and all to the Jerry Anderson podcast. Uh, now, you can get in touch with us. That's the most important thing to say because we'd love to get your emails at podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. Uh, you can tweet us on Twitter. You can uh, reach Jamie. I'm Jamie Anderson, or me, Richard N. James, and hashtag us Jerry Anderson podcast uh, so that we see your tweets and we'll read them out as well. Uh, we also have a Facebook group, the Jerry Anderson Podcast Listeners Facebook group. Um, very busy group, lots of people getting involved there, uh, leaving their drawings and uh, videos and uh, thoughts and comments. Uh, now, if you want to join, you do have three questions to answer. Mm. You must answer those questions. There's a whole backlog of people who haven't answered who are the questions. waiting to join who haven't answered the questions. I know. And you have to answer them before I'll let you in. Simple as that. So if you have applied and you haven't got in yet, just go back and uh, check those three questions. Just answer them very quickly. And I'll They're let very you easy. In. You can almost do, yeah, you can do one word answers for all of them, can't you? Uh, absolutely right. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, when did you start listening to us? What uh, platform? How do you listen yeah. to us? Yeah, and uh, do you agree just to uh, keep it nice and um, courteous and uh, and civil? Yeah, and, that's it. and everyone has. It's actually a really lovely, positive oh, place, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So thank you. And just by listening to us right now and hearing these words I'm saying at this very moment, you you are now officially a podsteron. Uh, that's true. That's our name for the Jerry Anderson yes. podcast listeners, as voted for by the podsterons yeah. themselves. Yes, that's true. Yes. Yes, that did happen. That was a thing. Yes. So what happened to the podcast, Richard? Everybody who listens, everyone who's already a podster on before this moment already knows, but it's basically... Yes. Well, if if you're new to this, then boy, have you got a treat in store. Mm. Uh, 
well, apart from Fab Facts, which is coming up shortly, <laughs> uh, Jerry's favourite uh, item in the podcast. We uh, scroll through a book of uh, Fab Facts in the Jerry Anderson universe. Uh, we are light on one, quite by random, and then spend an indeterminate amount of time uh, talking a load of nonsense about it, really. Yeah. Uh, then we'll move on to your emails, uh, listeners' emails, of course, which we love to get. And uh, we have uh, Chris Dale's fantastic randomizer a little later on whereby he sits down in front of a random episode from the Jerry Anderson universe, gives us his uh, his thoughts and and comments. And uh, we have an interview or feature as well this week. Uh, Who is that then, Jamie? Oh, sorry, I was looking at an email. (laughs) Right. You see, this is the thing. I've got a big bit to say, and you've waft away, don't you? Mm, Yeah, but... Go and make your cup of tea. No, 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 I'm not... the dog. I'm not going to do that, so... um... So, yeah, no, no, I, I, it was actually something relevant for later in the podcast, which I had to find out, which I now know. Fair enough. So Ooh. it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Uh, well, That's exciting. I mean, surprise for you, because you don't know that. Anyway, uh, no, the interview today is not an interview. Well, it is an interview. It's uh, it's an archive recording, again, because yeah. uh, our Derek Meddings archive interview from last week seemed to go down quite well. Um, yes. This time, it's from Andacon 2014, which was the Jerry Anson Ooh. convention that we ran in, in 2014, obviously. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> and it's the Thunder... That's about quarter past eight, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Very <laughs> clever joke. Um, <clears throat> uh, no, it's the Thunderbird's 50th anniversary panel from 2014, featuring Mary Turner, puppeteer and sculptor, Matt Zimmerman, also known as Alan Tracy, David Graham, well, you all know him well as Parker and Gordon Tracy and Brains, Mm-hmm. And two people who are sadly no longer with us, Judith, Judith Shutt, another puppeteer and sculptor, mm-hmm. and of course, the legendary late Shane Rimmer. Um, ah, so it's so nice that we have these recordings, because yeah. you know there may be, well be some posterons who were at Anacon 2014. Even if they were, they might not remember all the stuff that happened in the panel. There were some very funny yeah. moments, uh, of course, Matt Zimmerman taking centre stage much to David Graham's irritation. Um, so all those little bits <laughs> in there, questions from the audience, things you might want to know yourself. Um, it's a great yeah. fun sort of 35 minutes or so. So you've got that to look forward to later in this uh, in this episode. Nice. Yes, yeah, so I remember Anticon 2014. I spent most of the time running around in my um, actual orange leather police jacket, did. I think, didn't I? And yes. more importantly, mm-hmm. you had yeah. a beard. I did have a bit of a beard. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's not really made a reappearance since. No, it hasn't, you know, weirdly. When you, when you look at the photographs, you think, yeah, I won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that was. Well, I think we should set up a, a vote on the Jerry Anson Facebook, uh, <laughs> so the Jerry Anson <laughs> Podcast <laughs> Listens Facebook group with a picture of yeah. you with and without the beard and see what the posters right. think. And, and their vote will be binding. Oh, <laughs> If That's the beard so wins, fair. you stop shaving for a month. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right, That's how right, we work that. on the Jerry Anderson okay. podcast. Uh, also, Richard, you forgot to mention the Jerry Anderson news, which will slot in between <gasps> Fab Facts and listener emails. So, of course, so it, much to look forward to. Honestly, it's stuffed full to the brim, isn't it, this podcast? I know the Jerry Anderson news, of course. There's always news from the Jerry Anderson universe. And, of course, uh, I must take this opportunity, if you're listening... Well, if you're listening, I presume you are. When you finish listening, and if you enjoy the podcast, then uh, don't forget to uh, share us from whatever platform you're listening to us on and rate us and review us. Uh, and also, perhaps more importantly, subscribe. That way uh, you don't miss uh, a single episode every week when it appears in your little inbox yeah. or notification tray or whatever. And it's still the yeah. case that lots of you are listening and not subscribing. So, yeah. you know, Come on, just make it life tough for yourself. Press the subscribe yeah. button. Anyway, Richard, as you've already alluded to, Oh, yes. The bit which I like and you don't. Although you did right. a, an admirable job last week of well, thank you. coming up with a fab fact. Well, it wasn't difficult to be yeah, honest, Jamie. Rude. You're really over-egging it. Rude. Uh, <laughs> but I'm reunited with my very special book right here. There it is. Uh, here come the band, which means oh. Oh, it's, they come. it's time for... It, it's such a squeeze. Go on, right. I've just pushed my stool in. Fab facts. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Right, so as you all know, listeners, I've got my book of fab facts right here. Yeah. Listen to it. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Oh, uh, I'm going to flick through it. Rich is going to shout fab. We'll pick a random fab fact and then we'll discuss it, debunk it, be confused by it, whatever. Yeah. Something will happen. More than likely. Yep, here we go. So, Richard, are you ready? I am ready. Here we go, then. Fab. Right. I'm hoping we've hit a page we haven't landed on before. Yeah, we absolutely do. Good. Um, oh, this is a nice little one here. Is it? Yeah, and it's a bit unusual. So, <laughs> oh, good. Right, it's a protector's fact. 
Uh oh. No, no, that's good. That's good. Well, I don't know much about the protectors. Well, it doesn't matter because I probably will be able to tell you some things, possibly. Okay. Yeah. Jerry Anderson's Navy Blue Rolls Royce appeared oh, in the opening titles of the 1973 series The Protectors, starring Robert Vaughan and Nari Dawn Porter. Oh! That's it, is it? That's it. That's the fab fact. No, no, what I mean is, that's a great one. Yeah, I think that was quite cool. So Now, do you remember that car then, Jamie? Well, no, because that was in 1973 and I wasn't born until 1975. Well, I don't know how he kept it. No, but he might have kept it a long time. <clears throat> he did. He, he, so, it's really funny because Dad, Dad came from a relatively poor background, or very poor background. You know, his, um, mm. his mum and dad and his brother, and they all lived in Neasden in a tiny, tiny flat. Um, Dad's dad was a cigarette machine salesman. Oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> rather unusually and um, so dad really really wanted to to work his way out of of poverty um, mm. and so in his mind a, a one major symbol of of no longer living in poverty was to own a Rolls Royce right and so so many times in his life a Rolls Royce became an important thing so when Lou Grade uh, offered to buy AP films in 1961 yeah. Dad saw that as a way to get his first Rolls Royce that he'd always wanted. Um, after that, he was a regular uh, Rolls owner, and obviously it yes. became part of things like Thunderbirds and uh, later Terror That's Hawks. Right. Um, yes. When they got the deal for Terror Hawks, I think they went out and got themselves a couple of Rollers, him and Christopher Burr. Um, <laughs> and uh, at home, this is an extra. Uh, sub fab fact for you. Yeah, um, yeah. I've got a great photo of not that blue Rolls Royce, but one that Dad had later on when I was very young. And right. um, I'm in the picture, uh, sat on a potty having a wee. Oh, <laughs> it, uh, right. Can we see that? Is that going up on the uh, the listeners' Absolutely Facebook group? Absolutely not. No. <clears throat> but yeah, he, he had a variety of them through the years, including a brown one at one point, I think, which oh. was a bit uh, ugly. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So, I don't, Charlotte. What did Jerry drive during Space Precinct? Do you remember? Alexis. It was Alexis, yes, that's right. Yeah, you are. Yeah, he, a yellow one, did you say? Of oh, silver. Silver, and before that, he had a green one. No, he, yeah. he switched from um, yeah from loving the rollers um, in the yeah. kind of early 90s and, and <coughs> moved over to the Lexus. So there you go. I mean, this is going a bit above and beyond the, or, or below and beyond the, the fab fact. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. I remember, so I remember, <clears> you know, walking around the car park around the L&M block and always getting a thrill out of it seeing it's ridiculous isn't it? but seeing his car his, his space yeah. with the name Jerry Anderson reserved for Jerry Anderson Absolutely. yeah he, he loved his parking space at, uh, at Pinewood well why not big fan of that <clears throat> anyway Great. there you go uh, and that is the end of this week's Rolls Royce oh <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep it that yeah, they could pick one then, can't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, so uh, if you like Rolls-Royce, then great. If you like Carfax, then even better. That's great. Uh, well, thank you for that. Yeah, nice one there. Uh, so um, I just want to point out that people are leaving quite a few messages on our Facebook group. About? Uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, yeah, you can join the uh, the Jerry Anderson Podcast listeners' Facebook group. Just answer three questions and I shall let you in. People are joining in everywhere from uh, Grimsbury to Chicago, from Edinburgh to New Zealand, from uh, South Wales to Canada. Uh, so... Join them, join in the conversation. Gemma Fairchild, for example. Now, she left this post saying, um, I think what excites me is the 15-year gap from the end of UFO until the year 1999. What happened to Shadow in the alien threat? Was Alpha built by eagles for Shadow? Did Straker stay in command when some of the later episodes seemed to question his sanity? Or did Foster eventually adopt the role? Did the mass UFO attack Straker predicted ever happen? He wasn't often wrong with his hunches. Hmm, interesting thought. Well, these are the sort of conversations they're having. There are so many unknowns in yeah. the Jerry Anderson universe, and who knows? At some point, these things may be filled in. But yes, until then, wonderful. speculation yeah. uh, is the best we can manage. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tom Hodden is also he's on a Space Nineteen Ninety Nine binge at the moment. Well, uh, like uh, you, Richard. Every episode. Well, yeah, indeed, yeah, uh, showing up on Forces TV at the moment. Uh, I think they've just started season two, so it'll be interesting to they see have. how that divides fandom, won't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, Ian Jacklin has posted a video of FX Supremo Brian Johnson. Uh, Abby Randall posted pictures of a Thunderbird's glass that she found in a charity shop for 20p. <laughs> what a bargain. Going, isn't it? So, which leads me to ask you, dear listener, what was the greatest charity shop, car boot or jumble sale Jerry Anderson find? 
that you managed to get your paws on. There's bound to be a few Tracy Islands out there. Oh, loads, I should think. Definitely a few dinkies. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, get in touch with us, podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk, and let us know what your greatest charity shop car boot or jumble sale find was. Jerry Anderson related. Uh, Of course, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to finding out what the best one was. Um, Somebody will, you know, maybe they'll come back and say, I found an entire original Virgil Tracy head. Yes. At a yes. car boot sale, probably not. Who knows? But Who knows? Yeah, let us know. Uh, yeah, Richard, yeah, yes. Really old to the new. Oh yes. It's now time. If... Oh yeah. For the Jerry Anderson news. <laughs> you got gonna say it today? News, 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 uh, news. There we go. I thought you were going to say from the old to the news, you see. Oh, well, I, it's oh. sort of implied, isn't it? News yeah, is all right. New stuff. Anyway. Newsy news. Yeah, so here's some newsy news news for you, Richard. Oh, lovely. Uh, we've already mentioned Space 1999. Yes. And uh, I think we've previously mentioned that we found lots of copies of, uh, well, not lots, actually, a fair few, but... Uh, limited numbers of copies of the limited edition yep. Bringers of Wonders special edition Blu-ray that Network put out a couple of years ago. Yeah. There were 1999 copies available worldwide and they were previously thought to be sold out. Mm. But uh, in a corner of a warehouse, uh, we found a small supply of them and they've been on sale. They've been selling like hotcakes. In fact, it's possible by I the bet. time this podcast goes out that they're all gone. Mm. If they're not wow. all gone, then I suggest you grab one immediately. Yeah. Nine ninety nine, yeah. um, Lovely little set and, uh, yeah, a nice little collector's item. Lovely. I hope you've kept a couple back for our Fab Live winners, though, because we can't give them away. I've got, I've got them here. Don't worry. Excellent. They're well ready done. to go. Good. Uh, Good. So there you go. That's uh, Space 1999. As this podcast goes out, Richard, I will be yeah. with some very special, talented people doing something. Oh, yes. R- Where are we meeting? Well, uh, you're busy that uh, day, I think. Oh. Um, some right. other very talented, special people who work behind the camera, mostly. Mm. So, so that doesn't include Thank you. you. Uh, yeah. Doing some rather special, firestormy stuff. Ooh. Now, I can't see anymore at this time. Uh, as uh, our listeners may know, Firestorm is a brand new Jerry Anderson show that uh, in pre production oh. we're doing some uh, additional development work to take it to the next level. And um, yes. something rather fun is happening right this moment if you're listening on the day of release. Can, can I say it? Can I say oh, it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely say it now. There's brand new Jerry Anderson stuff happening right now. You're quite right. Uh, so God, I got quite deep there, didn't you I? You did. Yeah, Gosh. that's how serious it was. You see. What was that like a a, a, a B flat uh, two below middle C something like that? It's got to be, isn't yeah. it? At least it that sounded like think. it. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so there you go. Um, more nice. as we have it, but uh, cool. it's, it's 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 going to be really nice to be doing the thing that I'm doing right now because I've been yes. looking forward to it for a little while. Anyway, there you go. I mean, yeah, no, that's great because people, you know, people often ask, "What what's happening with Firestorm? What about Firestorm? When are we going to see Firestorm?" It is coming. It's on its it just way. Just takes a long time to do these things. Absolutely right. Yes, but uh, before you know, it, it'll be here. Oh, in fact, we, uh, I've just. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh yes. Ooh, Jamie. So I've just been sent something by somebody who's working on the Firestorm thing that we're doing right now, and yeah. uh, it looks lovely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Show oh, me. Hang on. Here you go, Richard. There's a little glowing thing. Can oh, you see it? Oh, that is lovely. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yes, I like that. Oh, that's rather exciting. Anyway, ah, enough of that. Great. Enough teasing. I don't like to be a terrible tease. It's just no, 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 I'm no, just sharing excitement here. Um, yes, yes. Dream episodes, Richard. Was there a space precinct oh, yeah. dream episode? There wasn't, was there? I think the whole thing was a weird dream. Well, wasn't it, it? yeah, it was for both those involved in the show itself and the <laughs> and the viewers. But no, yeah. there are plenty of Jerry Anderson dream episodes. Uh, Terror Hawks, where Einstein yes. dreams they're <clears throat> doing a big special attack on Mars and uh, um, yeah. uh, attack on Cloud Base uh, in Captain Scarlet. Anyway, our very own Chris Dale has compiled a list. Has had a dream of the, No, no. No, he's living the dream by doing this. He has compiled the five best and five worst Jerry Anderson dream episodes, and you can read oh. his list on the Jerry Anderson website right now. I like it. Yeah. Maybe we should do a dream podcast <laughs> rather than the usual nightmare, nightmare one. one. Yes. <laughs> Don't make me laugh when I've got a cough. No, no, um, sorry. Anyway, yes, yeah, so go and read that at uh, jerryanderson.co.uk. And also on the YouTube channel, 
Yeah, it's all go, it isn't is it? It is all go. It's a very busy place now. Uh, but uh, yep. the Century 21 Tech Talk episodes continue to be uh, put out once a week and are, well, garnering many thousands of views. Tens of thousands of views, in fact. So if you haven't checked those out, go and do it right now. Well, no, after yes. you finish the podcast. Yes, exactly. They could always, they could always pause the podcast, watch it, and well, then come back. I don't back. want to get distracted. Uh, no, but, no. Uh, yes, you go over there. Brains talks about vehicles from the, the 21st century, from the worlds of Century 21. So... Go and have a look. Stop the podcast. Uh, Podsterons, we are interrupting this broadcast to ask for your assistance with something. The British Podcast Awards are coming up and there is a Listener's Choice Award supported by BBC Sounds um, and we would love it if you would vote for us. Um, if you enjoy what we're doing, if you get a giggle out of what we're up to, if you enjoy the news, if you like the randomizer, any of that or all of it, then we'd really appreciate it if you'd give us a vote. Um, to do so, you just go to britishpodcastawards.com slash vote. That's britishpodcastawards.com slash vote. Um, there's an easy bo- box there where you can search for the podcast. Just type in Jerry Anderson. Make sure you click the right one. Uh, put in your name and email address, and that's it. Done. It takes about 15 seconds, uh, and every vote counts, and um, we'd really appreciate it. We certainly don't expect to win. Um, that's very self-deprecating, isn't it? But we don't. But uh, we, we'd love to make the uh, the shortlist, which is the, the top 20 podcasts as voted for by listeners. So, Podsterons, that's your mission if you choose to accept it. And uh, now back to Richard and Jamie. Oh, I mean, past Richard and Jamie. And as far as I know, Richard, that's the end. That was the news. That was the news. Uh, yes, that was the end of the news. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here all week. Uh, every week. Sadly. Uh, now, <laughs> have you got any tweets or anything to share with us? Yes, I've got a few tweets. Of course, people are always getting in touch with us on Twitter. Just hashtag us, Jerry Anderson Podcast, so we see them. Or you can tag I'm Jamie Anderson or me, Richard N. James. Uh, Josh Long, for example, who we hear from regularly, said another epic podcast uh, from the uh, Jerry Anderson Podcast team. Uh, with That's uh, Jamie Anderson, Sir Richard James, he says, and Chris Dale. Uh, uh, this week, uh, focusing on the fantastic Derek Meddings. He was and is and always will be a vital part of the Anderson universe. Megan said Shane Rimmer last week. Derek Meddings this week. You boys are determined to have me sobbing like a baby, aren't you? Well, no, not really. No, it's just but, it, yeah. every week's a celebration on the Jerry Anderson podcast. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Philip said he had a tough cycle into work today with a headwind, much improved by piping the Jerry Anderson podcast into his ear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be of service. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, and over on the uh, Facebook listeners page, uh, Isabel Saucier, which is how I'm going to say it. Saucier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, says, I was watching the Captain Scarlet episode Avalanche the other day. Aside from the fact that apparently there are still trappers living in log cabins in Canada in 2068, the fur trade had largely declined by the 1800s. What surprised me the first time I watched it was that they made the trapper French Canadian, as many trappers were, and someone, either Shane Rimmer or Gary Files, actually gave him a French Canadian accent, which is different from a French French accent. The attention to details were not only in the sets and puppets, it was also in those small things. It could also have been a nod from Shane to his home country. I yeah, must be, I knows? bet it was a nod from Shane. I bet it was a nod yeah, from Shane. Reckon. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. So, Thanks, uh, yes, do get in touch with us there. Um, start a new conversation if you wish. Uh, people are posting videos. Um, I think uh, Tom Hodden's talking about posting a little bit of fan fiction, which we'd love to read. Um, it's all go on the Jerry Anderson Podcast listeners' Facebook group. Unstoppable. Aren't they? Perfect. Yeah, That's how we like it. Um, <clears throat> now, not everybody likes to be on Facebook. Not everybody is on Facebook. Some people just like no. plain old email. Yep. And uh, we've had loads this week, Richard. Cool, haven't we? Yes. So, should we dive directly into the listener emails? Come on, then. I think it might be time to listen to the uh, you-know-what. This is the voice of the Podsterons. Spooky. Very spooky. Yeah. We always <laughs> we always know what's happening when the green rings appear. Uh, that's right, yes, as I told my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave you an ice cream for it, didn't he? So it's fine. He did, yes. <laughs> so uh, my first email today, which is from Chris Garrard. Oh, yeah. Mm. He says, hi, Jamie and Richard. Hello, Chris. First of all, mm. I would like to thank you both again for your terrific podcast. Well, it's a pleasure, oh. Chris, isn't it? Isn't yes, it, Richard? always a pleasure, yeah. always. I look forward to listening to the show every week, and I was bowled over with excitement when I discovered that last week's podcast was dedicated to the effects genius that is Sir Derek Meddings. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. I absolutely mm-hmm. and thoroughly enjoyed hearing Derek's recollections from Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, and the UFO era. Uh 
He was, without a doubt, ahead of his time, and his magnificent models and beautifully designed craft, along with his pure genius approach to the Jerry Anderson shows, will stand tall forever. A lasting legacy. God bless mm. him. Take care, gentlemen, and keep up the splendid work. All the best, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, yeah, Chris. lovely. Yeah, it Very is nice, nice thoughts, to then. hear from these geniuses from the past. And again, we're so lucky that we've got access to these amazing archive recordings because... You know, we keep we keep losing yeah. them. It's going to happen. Passing a time. Yeah. I mean, Derek, yeah. it, it was gone many many years ago. I think nineteen ninety five. Yeah. We said, didn't we? I mean, that's right. Too, far too soon. Um, yeah, indeed. But you know, we can hear their voices. These voices from the past, and you might learn yes, a thing or right. two, or at least feel like you get to know the people who who made our childhoods so magical. Absolutely right. And their work, of course, you know, it it. it it carries on, it's on the shelves around us, isn't it? That's the thing, on the DVDs and the videos that we have. If people are still watching videos, do anyone still have videos? I don't know. VHS? I bet somebody's got a VHS player. Yeah, yeah. of course they have. I have an email here from uh, Robert. Uh, Robert says, hi guys, playing it safe there. Hello, Robert. Uh, first of all, I'm thankful other listeners were able to help me identify all the voices in the intro from a podcast uh, or two ago. Oh yes, I remember. I really couldn't get them all. As a thank you, here is a fab fact for you. Cool. Oh, two fab facts in one podcast. Amazing. Is it time to bring the band back in, Jamie? No, they're, 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 no, because no. we have, no, we have to we have, yeah, we have to pay them a fee for each time. All right, next so week. No. Next week. Stand down. Yeah. Um, he says this in the Star Trek novel Rules of Engagement. Kirk is ordered to give orbital cover and support to some diplomats and officials that are withdrawing or retreating from a planet. Now, at one point, Kirk is thinking about the situation and idly remembers a crew member's old videotapes containing a reference to Stingray. Whoa. I have gone to my Kindle version and circled the passage for you. I hope that's a good enough fab fact. Kind regards from Robert. And he did indeed send a little screenshot here. Now, I'm going to read this. I'm not going to do my uh, my Jim Kirk impression, I don't think. Are you sure? Not today. Yeah. Not today. Okay. Um, so, it says this. Noted, Gither, said Jim, more relieved than he was willing to admit. He and the Enterprise had been away from the action for almost 12 hours, and he kept thinking of a line from one of Freeman's more peculiar tapes. Anything can happen in the next half hour. He remembered vaguely that the line had been delivered as someone called Battle Stations. Wow. Well, there it is. So it's Little it's canon that somebody yeah. in Star Trek was a fan yeah. of Stingray and Stingray. had the tapes, and that Kirk watched, the, watched at least enough to remember that. Yes, that's right. There you go. Amazing, isn't it? Now this ties in rather nicely with the uh, the uh, the apple farming book we had. Yes, uh, apple, a few apple weeks back. farming. Is that well? What's the word? <laughs> apple rearing. What do you do with an apple? You grow it, don't or, you? I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Orchard tending. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, I think it was his name was Phil Steer. I think is that right? Who uh, the writer of that particular book? Who um, actually got in touch on Twitter. Oh, did he? And yes, and uh, said he'd be up for an interview. Oh, I missed that. Great. So um, maybe I should uh, dig that out and get in touch with him again. Yeah, do. Anyway, Fantastic. I digress. Thanks for that, Robert. That's a lovely little spot, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. If you see any sort of a, um, examples of cross pollination from one uh, one genre to another or from one property to another, uh, let us know. Yeah. It's always fun to see. Podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. That's the one. Uh, and uh, Mark Wilson emailed that very address with Good. these words. Oh, yes. Afternoon, chaps. Hello. Loving the podcast, as always. Ooh. I do feel, however, that I need to confess something to you both. Please uh, right. don't be too disappointed in me. Um, but I've never actually seen or even been interested in watching any of Jerry Anderson's live action series. <gasps> what? Mark! What? However. Uh, however. Yes? Since getting to know you both a bit better through the podcast... Mm. I've got all the Space 1999 episodes so far on my planner from Forces TV. Great. And have attempted to start working my way through them. Now, attempted to start working my way doesn't <laughs> yeah. sound great, no, but at least no, he's trying. Much effort. Yes. However, Mark says, I, I can say I've been pleasantly surprised. <laughs> okay. And I'm making a conscious effort to explore new Jerry Anderson shows after the puppets. Can you recommend any particular episodes from other shows I should try next? Obviously, Ooh. Space Precinct, Richard, from you. Um, any particular favourites of yours, Jamie? Looking forward oh. to the big Pod 50 meetup, or whatever happens, sent from oh, Mark yes. Wilson. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Great, Mark. Now, do mm. you have any, any post-puppet uh, recommendations? Post-puppet recommendations? I mean, you're, well, of course, you're obviously going to recommend them. Yes. Space Precinct, I 
Of course, that. Well, you've got to go for Predator and Prey, or you've got to go for Takeover, or you've got to go for uh, Time to Kill. I like Two Against the Rock, uh, actually. Two Against the Rock, yeah. All the sort of in the later half, they're always worth watching. Uh, <laughs> also yeah, in the early stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, there's some great Space 1999 episodes I've been seeing on Forces TV recently. Dragon's Domain and all that sort of stuff's so worth watching. Yeah. Oh, well, Dragon's Domain, obviously, you know. Yes, of course. <clears throat> yeah, Mark, actually, you should go to the YouTube channel and check out uh, Chris's top 10 scariest moments from Space mm. 1999 and maybe watch some of those mm. uh, if you want to, to watch them in non-broadcast order. Um, yeah. And I would say actually go and give uh, New Captain Scarlet a try. We've oh, got Rat Trap yeah. on the YouTube channel, which you can watch for yeah. free. So maybe yeah. pop along and have a look at that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, there's all good stuff. I love Terror Hawks. Terror Hawks is definitely yeah. worth a go. Uh, yeah. Bit of UFO. Bit of UFO, absolutely. Uh, even Dick, I even mean, Dick Spanner. It's good for a bit of, yes. a, bit of a laugh, isn't it? Of course, yeah. I think I saw a tweet or a message from someone recently saying they'd seen their first ever episode of Dick Spanner and were absolutely bowled over by how funny it was yeah. and how different it was as well. We often say that, don't we? Yeah, it's very, very different. Um, anyway, there you go. There you are. There's some personalised uh, recommendations just yeah. for you. And as we often say, you know, the Jerry Anderson universe is so huge, you know, you don't have to like it all. Pick and choose. There'll be something for you. Yeah. But uh, good on you, Mark, for sort of looking outside your uh, your comfort zone. Absolutely. Um, now, I've got quite a long one here, and this one's from Robert Taylor. Uh, he's put lots of words down. Robert Taylor, who who is his, was a friend of Dad's, I should add, uh-huh. and uh, I know very well and occasionally have lunch with, so uh, Lovely. I hope good. he said something okay. nice. Well, let's see. He says, hi, Jamie and Richard. Well, he's off to a pretty poor start there, isn't he? Well, good for me. (laughs) Uh, I've been waiting intently to mail in some constructive and supportive rhetoric on your podcasts, so you kept me waiting until podcast 35. He says, OK, fine. (laughs) Only joking, the previous 34 were also worthy of comment, and your saint and greavesy banter often has me chuckling aloud quite randomly on the train from Maidenhead to Paddington to the horror of the non-Jerry Anderson podcasting passengers. Well, Robert, I might well have seen you there because that's uh, that's my. Yeah, line you as probably well. uh, have, yeah. have been in the same airspace and not even yeah. known. Absolutely. Anyway, returning to Pod Thirty Five with Marcus Hearn, I enjoyed this with particular interest given my own personal memories of your father. Everything Marcus recounted, I can fully endorse, especially surrounding his love of Bond and his near miss of directing one through to the last months of his life when he really did open up regarding his brother Lionel, and indeed he was very emotional about him. I remember vividly Jerry showing me Lionel's RAF picture of your mum's, and he was literally choking on tears, telling me of when he lost his brother. As Marcus said, perhaps this and his other childhood memories of his mother made the man. Pod 35 also had a top 10 Barry Gray pot pickers rundown. It did. It, is, it was courtesy of uh, Mark Simpson Wedge, I think. Yeah. Um, Barry's contribution to the enormous success of Jerry's shows, I still believe, is massively underrated. Well, not here it isn't, Robert. Uh, but I must protest that my own personal favourite, indeed the one that I used as uh, the walk in music to my wedding dinner, Jerry and Mary were there, didn't make the top 10. This is a travesty, Jamie, and I demand a recount. Nay, I will protest at Parliament until we get another referendum. Oh, please, no. Um, I speak of what must be Barry Gray's finest short, which is the end titles to Joe 90. There's simply not a better one-minute track of music in TV history. It was met with a smile from all at the wedding, and Jerry was clearly seen finger-tapping the table with gusto whilst Mary looked on disparagingly. I'm like, I can't imagine that. (laughs) Anyway, what a superb podcast, so congrats to you. I do like your postings uh, of them on LinkedIn, so I hope some of my 19,000 followers might tune in. They should. Well, thanks for that. Uh, What I can say is your father would love them, but more than that, he would be very proud of you, as he once said to me when he was looking at your rowing picture on his Pinewood office wall, a chip off the old block. Hoping to hear of good news re Firestorm soon, kindest Robert Taylor. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, of course he'd be proud of you. Of course he would. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. That's lovely. That's very nice. <clears throat> yeah, cheers. Uh, Robert. Talking of um, Barry Gray and so on, I don't know if anyone's listened to uh, Craig Charles, who's currently sitting in for Steve Wright on Radio 2 right. in the afternoons. Well, he did run a little bit of a poll because he wanted to choose, uh, the listeners to choose, whether to play the uh, theme to Joe 90 or the theme to Thunderbirds at the uh, end of the show. What did they choose? Well, he played them both. Did he? Oh, good. Yeah, of course We he know did. the Red Dwarf guys are all fans of uh, everything Thunderbirds, yes. don't we? Because they, yeah. uh, at Brit Sci-Fi in 2013 or 14, they were there and they yeah. met Scott Tracy with dear Richard Gregory. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> and they all That's right. immediately dived to the floor to have selfies. Um, Chris yeah. Barry tried to feed Scott a, a digestive biscuit. I mean, <laughs> right. yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys. Yeah. 
<laughs> Crazy guys. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice to know. Yes, it, we, it's amazing how the, those bits of music keep cropping up all over the place. Yes, don't they? Even now, you know, 50, 40, 30 years later, it's extraordinary. They'll be around forever, won't they? We know Quite that. right, too. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, lovely. If you've got a Indeed. message you would like to share with us, any thoughts or anything like that, drop us a line, podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk or tweet us. Richard, how do they tweet us? Well, you can hashtag us, Jerry Anderson Podcast, and you can uh, tag uh, I'm Jamie Anderson or me, Richard N. James, and we'll see your tweets there. Um, in the meantime, Mark Braxton has uh, left a, a comment on YouTube. Uh, this is, or not YouTube, uh, Twitter rather. This is about um, uh, Pod 43 and the Derek Meddings feature. It says, Childhood Hero, right there. Um, Nick Stevens said, uh, When I first started trying to learn CGI, there were two people I learned from above all others. Ron Thornton from uh, Babylon 5 for how to use the tools and Derek Meddings for what I needed to do to make something look real. There you go. Nice, and of course, Ron yeah. who ended up on New Captain Scarlet, so both Aha. contributors to the, yeah. uh, the Jerry Anderson universe. Yeah, that's great. Lovely. So, yes, do get in touch. And, of course, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us on and uh, leave us a nice review. I'll be coming to some of those a little later. Oh, OK. And, uh, yeah, and uh, a nice rating. And uh, don't forget to share us with your friends so they get to hear us too. Perfect. Right, yeah. well, that's the end of that bit. Good. Feature? Yeah. Can we do that? Let's do that. Yeah, so the feature this week... What's this about? ...is, then? well, it's Thunderbirds mm-hmm. related, no. which is nice. People like that. Yep. Hosted by Kevin Davis and Acon 2014. It features mm-hmm. contributions from Mary Turner, David Graham, Matt Zimmerman, uh, and the sadly departed Judith Shutt and Shane Rimmer. It's a nice little panel, a bit of uh, Kevin chatting with the, the guys at the beginning, and then moving over to audience questions and answers for the rest of the session. So there's all sorts of bits and pieces discussed. Uh, a nice bit of fun, as I mentioned earlier, with um, David Graham getting annoyed by Matt Zimmerman, which is uh, <laughs> always amusing to hear. Uh, yeah. So we hope you enjoy this. And um, if you do enjoy it, the very end, and you want to relive it and see it, uh, it will be available on the YouTube channel later this week. Jerry, um, youtube.com slash Jerry Anderson TV. But for now, just for you, podcast listeners, here is the Thunderbirds 50th anniversary panel from Anacom 2014. I'd like to welcome to the stage people from Thunderbirds. Here we go. We've got... Uh, give them a big warm hand here because I'm going to list them all in no particular order. David Graham. There you go. And Mr. Matt Zimmerman. <laughs> Understated as ever. <laughs> Shane Rimmer. <laughs> <laughs> Judith Shutt. Didn't join us at the other end. And David Elliott. You want to come up here? Oh, you're going to sit down there. You're going to sit. Mary Turner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There we go. There you go, in that chair. Come and sit down, Mary Taylor. <laughs> Who are you getting into trouble? That, that's all right. We saw the puppets earlier. We're, we're talking to you today, this time. Um, OK, so, well, I don't know how we're going to work this. I'm sure everyone's got loads of questions. We'll come to in a minute. Um, did you, at the time, did any of you sit down with family and friends and watch the episodes? Can you remember the sort of uh, feedback that you got at that time when it was first on air? We've got a microphone, but let's start with I, David. Uh, da- David first. I, I do oh. know that once it took Hang on, off... Man, I said David first. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can't well, stop him. You can't stop him. He looked I'm, like he was looking at me. You can't stop him. You looked um, like you were looking at no, me. No, no, I look at all of you at the same time. I'm, well, I'm so hey. starstruck. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did watch it quite a bit with, with family and friends. But you, you, we didn't realise at the time how big it was going to be. But, of course, the Thunderbirds was a climax of all the previous series. Yes. And there, there was a groundswell for Jerry's work, which sort of built up. Mm. And, and Thunderbirds was really, a, you know, <coughs> a possibly the icing on the cake, mm. which I was very proud and lucky to be part of. Well, we have die-hard, die-hard fans here for all the different shows, I'm yeah, sure. Right. There's a big contingent for Space 1999. 
But I know that as a, probably Thunderbirds is the biggest one yeah, as right. far as the fan base is concerned. Um, Shane, did you watch yeah. it with family and friends? Uh, no, I was an outcast. Were you? No, I... <laughs> Had no family, no yeah. friends? No. <laughs> I used to... Uh, the, the dialogue was something that escaped me at times. I mean, I, I was usually uh, involved in repartee with the man on my left. <laughs> and I missed a few. I... Uh, how do I put this? <laughs> Can I? No, just a minute. I... Uh, it was an amazing event, simply because, I think for most of us, first, it was just getting together as yeah. a kind of a crew up in space. Uh, Jerry had a marvelous sort of concept of this, because usually when you go into a multi-voiced uh, recording, you're in separate parts of the recording studio. He wouldn't have it. It was one large central mic. And because he said, God, you're way up in space. You're not, you're not out on different arms of this thing. Uh, be together. Well, being together sometimes got you a couple of bruises in the head because when you had to get into the, uh, into the microphone field, uh, you had to get there in any way it was possible to get there. <laughs> you know? So we had a lot of scrimmages going on in that thing. I don't know whether you heard any. Uh, but you had to get to your place of... of uh, doing the lines, uh, and still maintain a kind of a balance in where the, where the voices were coming from. So, you know, we got our daily, we got a weekly workout with that thing. Mm. Getting up off the floor was a, a bit of a bruiser sometimes, <laughs> wasn't it? But you, you never shared these experiences with family and friends when you got back home. Oh, yes. You yeah. did. They so didn't just what I was, the question is, is whether you actually watched the episodes back then. In the living room. <laughs> <laughs> whether you did. Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah. Matt. No, I never watched them. <laughs> Not at all. Well, I know I didn't at all. I mean, well, because I was doing other stuff and work. I only started to watch them, and suddenly it took off, and fans were coming up and saying, what was your favorite episode? And I would go, uh... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I finally got copies, and I watched them, so I would learn some of them. And yeah. now I know it is a move when you're dead, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm quick like you that. Ah, you know the Just episode titles. Fast, you know. That's impressive. But, uh, I, See, I, they're I, all I, experts out there. Um, are they? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, so therefore, no, I never watched them at the beginning. I mean, it was still a job. It wasn't until the, the, it, the, the, the 32 episodes came out and suddenly, I, like uh, you were both as well, of getting phone calls from magazines and newspapers. They wanted your picture, they wanted your story, mm. because you were doing a voice. Mm. And you were going, what, what, are they crazy, you know? But uh, are you late? <laughs> he's, the, he's the official photographer. <laughs> oh, well, then you're very late. <laughs> he's trying to not get on camera. He's, no, it's all right. <laughs> but uh, so therefore, you know, you never bothered with it at all until suddenly, you know, when people start asking you about it, you have to find out about it. That's all yeah. it was, you know? Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's it? That's it. I can, okay. <laughs> Mary, did you watch it with family and friends? I don't remember doing so. I don't think yeah. I was... No, you might have thrown up a bit. I don't remember doing so at the time. I no. Just, I was just busy working and... That's yeah. right. Did you, did you get so the... the when the videotapes it. came out many years later, did you get them then? Were you curious um, to see it all those years later? Well, I had seen the episodes before that. Um, I can't remember how or when, but... Uh, Conventions uh, and things. Um, I didn't go to any conventions. Did you not? In the early no. days, I think the first one was 81, so it was a while. No, you I, the trouble I, is, this is... This is the first one I've been to. Is it? Yes. I saw you at the concert. That's where I saw you. The concert? That was at the Barry Gray concert a few years ago. Oh, yes. That was yes. very good. The rub yeah. organised. Yes. David, down there. Did you, up, David. did you ever watch the stuff back? No, the David Elliott on the floor down there. Did you ever watch it back at home with My family turn. and friends? No, um, because it, it wasn't on when I was at home. Right. Um, and my son actually bought uh, the set of Thunderbirds on DVD, but I haven't even watched those. Um, but I will do one day, yeah. Right. <laughs> my Don't man. Don't leave it too late, Dave. I'm sorry? Don't leave it too late. <laughs> do, do you know something I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Judith, you got your microphone I'll there. Yeah, what, what was it like? Did you, did you sort of get feedback at the time from well, people that saw? No, I, I don't remember anything about. You Nothing know, at I all. I don't remember watching it, and I don't remember having feedback. Or... Was there not a sense of uh, pride knowing that when you saw 
kids with the outfits or the yeah, toys. But, you, I don't but knowing think, that you I were don't involved. think they had any outfits in those days. Oh, there were. I bet some of them still got them. What, in, in, <laughs> but kids don't seem to dress up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember the little Thunderbird hat. And I, that. I had one. <laughs> I made one for my uncle when he had his Stanner stairlift put in. He wasn't. He was. He, 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 yeah, he, he gave me that kind of look. <laughs> no, I had to do something for Sylvia at one point when she launched a book. It's her book. Yeah. And she actually had a costume made for me as Alan. Really? I had to wear it. Oh God. <laughs> It's still in therapy. The things you do for love. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I thought I'm, you were taller. <laughs> <laughs> he was yesterday. That's right. Um, I mean, this went huge. It went to, obviously, to there was a feature film eventually. And it went around the world. I've got something here I picked up a little while ago. But, uh, look world. at this. I think, language. if I'm right, I think this was Argentinian. Look at that. Anyone see one of those? Look at that. Woo! Yes, I'm open to offers if anyone wants to come and see me after. But, <laughs> but that's um, why they attacked the Falklands. That's why, that's, that's how popular it got. It went yeah, all yeah, around the world. Yeah. Exciting. Very, very good. Exciting. There we go. There we go. But it was, it was huge. Absolutely huge. And, um, did, and also it went on to have, like, the mine show. Did any of you go and see that when they... And the guys yes, did a I mime did, yeah. show. Yeah, David, went, you saw it, did yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. I went with Jerry one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Good fun. You saw it as well. Yeah. Mm. The, were, were you impressed or were you a little bit sort of no, rather was... hurt that they were taking the mickey out of your puppetry? <laughs> no, 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 it was very good. <laughs> it, was, it was very clever. And I'm sure, how many people saw the Mime Theatre Project? Yeah, quite a lot, I thought so. And uh, no, that was, that was another example of how it was so popular. Um, we're going to throw it open to the audience because there's lots of you and I'm sure loads of people want to ask questions. So I'm looking around seeing who's going to be... Oh, well done. First one, hand up. Don't be bashful now. You know, I know you've got questions you want to ask. We've got to borrow one of the microphones. So, there you go. You can always lean into me and use my... <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, incorrigible. <laughs> Leave us alone. Hello, yes, you're quite right. The question is for you, because I've asked it before, and it's such a brilliant answer, and I know people are going to want to hear it, but in, uh, and the, the other two can join in if they wish, but in your opinion, what would your characters be doing 20, 30 years down the line? I didn't understand the word you said. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what is Alan up to now? What Alan is up to now? And the others. You know, well, John oh, becomes God. a monk, etc. Parker's up to no good. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, uh, well, Alan and Tintin got married and they had four children. Uh, they were called Jeff, Scott, <laughs> Virgil, and of course, Alan. Uh, it, well, unfortunately, when, uh, when uh, Jeff passed away, uh, Scott had to take over an awful lot of Jeff's duties. And so, uh, 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 Scott, uh, Alan also started using Thunderbird 1 as well as uh, Thunderbird 3. Yes, know, yes, 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 I know. <laughs> well, I'm telling you now. Because, unfortunately, uh, uh, Scott ended up in a wheelchair. So he couldn't use, he couldn't fly the ship anymore. Uh, we had trouble with John, because John ended up in an asylum, because <laughs> he spent so much time up in that thing, he didn't know where he was half the time. Um, the only was, person we had problem who ran away and disappeared was Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> uh, he finally ended up Again. in some other island with some Sorry. sort of mermaid-looking woman that I didn't understand <laughs> at all, you know. And other than that, uh, Virgil, ended up being a concert pianist and having a good, very good career touring the world as a concert pianist. Is that enough? That'll do. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there he is. Actually, he Parker can't stand now. when the attention <laughs> is off. Will you shut up for one moment? <laughs> <laughs> but Parker, Parker lives on, doesn't he, David? Well, he, yeah. he drives a car for Addison Lee at the moment. <laughs> Because he picked me up the other day right. and took me home. <laughs> and you're very light. <laughs> David, Parker will be living again, won't he? Oh, yes. Yes, he's, tell he, us he, whatever you can... He's going to be reborn <coughs> next year. OK. 
Um, Have yes. you done any recordings yet? Yes, I've done quite a few. Oh, okay. Yes, there's 26. Oh, there, okay. And they're going to come out next spring uh -huh. on computer graphics. Have they shown you any clips yet? No, they haven't shown me any clips. They've shown me some picture stills of the characters, yes. which look very, very good. Um, Parker looks as handsome as ever. Good. Yeah, yeah. Based on me, of course. Uh, and um, there's 26 episodes going out on ITV and they're being made in New Zealand. They have shown us films of building the sets, mm -hmm. which are extremely elaborate and uh, the best that money can buy. Yeah. So, I mean, the format of the show is exactly the same. I've heard that they've got CGI characters, but they've actually done model aircraft. Is that right? Well, I'm not absolutely certain ah, because okay. I, don't, I don't know quite. We'll have to wait and I've see. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's going to be very, very classy. Yeah. I'm Apart curious from about, me, that there's is. one question I've got to ask, though, is I heard that K. Van Novak is doing the voice of Brains. If they got you in to do Parker, yeah. why is somebody else doing Brains? You'll have to ask the producers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to double up anymore. Do yeah, you? that's kind of well. well that, but there we are. But I heard he was going to do him as sort of Asian Indian. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh. Curious. <laughs> They're obviously done something different with it, but there you go. Okay, another question. Very quick down there. Very good. Just on. Hang on, wait for the mic. Uh, just following on with that, David. Yes. Uh, The mic yeah, the mic's not working, the camera won't pick it up. Can we do that one again? Should we take... It's Judith has another mic. Have you turned it off? I could just hear, not very well. Liam, though. Judith has another mic. Try that one. I think we're good. I think the audience is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, um, yeah. David, um, You've all said how the original series you did like a radio series, all doing the, um, the, the, the voices first. In the new series, is this being done the same way or yes, is it being done differently? Yeah, it's being done the same way in a studio in Soho Square. Um, I don't see a lot of the other characters because most of my stuff is with Rosamund Pike, who is now playing Lady Penelope. But it's being done, you know, the, f the first series we did as a, a group, as a play. And I think that paid off because, you know, we just did it as a drama. But mm. this is being done in, in sections, really, which they all fit together, send out to New Zealand and, and dub it on to the finished film. And Shane, there was a, oh. a camaraderie yeah. doing it that way, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Just absolutely. all everyone grouped together to, for the recording. It worked. You say about fighting for the microphone space, but really yeah. it was... Yeah. I'm doing an episode with him. Are you? Yes. This is news. Yes. Who are you playing? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing an archaeologist and they dug him up from somewhere. <laughs> I'll get you with that, David. <laughs> Any more I questions think. over there? Can, can, can oh. I just add something? Oh. A friend of a, a mine's yeah. oh, oh, a friend of mine just been to Weta Workshop and she saw them building one of the models for City. Oh. And she said, like with the original series, they are using all sorts of bits of things. She said they were using like skateboard wheels and things to make things. So they are obviously using real models. So that's, that's a bit that's of information good. for you. Uh, no, you would expect that from Weta, wouldn't yes. you? That's good. Say okay. hello to Ned for me. Somebody over there had their hand up, I saw. There you go, down there. Um, hi there. Uh, question Would you like to stand up? They want to see you. Why should he? <laughs> Do you want to stand up? Don't be bashful. We We're all friends ah, here. Good. Okay, <laughs> now we can see you. Hi. Uh, 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 question for all the panel. Um, is there a particular uh, memorable or favourite line that or scene to film? Uh, a, a, a line or a scene? A favourite yeah. memorable yeah. line or scene? Well, this is a chance for them to do some of the voices, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You guys, voice guys, are there any favourite lines <laughs> or scenes that you can remember? Or well, can I you do a bit of, bit of your characters? We'd like to hear well, a Well, I remember bit. one when I was... Um, I think Parker had a, an oppo called Light Fingered Fred, and I was playing both parts. Actually. Ah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. um, and that, I don't know, they were, sort of ro they were sort of reform robbers, and they were uh, trying to rob a bank. And um, I remember that very well. It's hard to remember something one did 50 years ago in terms of script. 
Mm. But it was a lovely episode because there was a lot of comedy in it. Mm. And that was a, gra a great thing about the, the series as a whole. There was lots of comic, e comic episodes and elements in the series. And I think that's what made it, apart it from the it adventure. Warmer, it? Yeah, it makes it warmer, apart from all the fantastic special effects. Yeah. Okay, mm. but can we have a little bit of Parker, please? Do. <laughs> 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 what you want to hear? Uh, well, there we are. I think Parker was Parker very fond of Lady Penelope. Well, they were travelling the car once, and he reached back to adjust a safety belt, you know, and their strings touched. <laughs> <laughs> it was a moment of mad erotic tension. <laughs> and uh, Lady Penelope said, "Watch it, Parker." <laughs> so so, I, so I, I was hands off <laughs> ever right after. Right yes, yeah, very proper. Ever after, I should say. <laughs> Shane, you said hey. that you didn't understand some of the scripts, but but Scott was very you much. Didn't in charge, didn't didn't you didn't understand any of them. Didn't understand any of it. I was just learning to read at that time, so I was <laughs> having a hell of a lot of problem. Oh, was that was it? Yeah. Well, it was sort of quirky. Anyway, the the. Uh, what I couldn't remember, and this is crazy, I mean, I've been with this group for how many years, and I kept on getting the names confused. I mean, I had us getting into the most ridiculous disasters. You mean like uh, your own name? Yeah, that was, that was the best one. <laughs> the only one. And uh, so I had to go before the uh, session started and memorize these names so I didn't get the, the right person doing the wrong thing. I drove, I drove the editors mad. They didn't know what. <laughs> And so th that was about it. I mean, it, there, was, there was so much going on, and you had uh, uh, the Keep a Clear Head, which I was never very much. You were brilliant at keeping a clear yeah. head. I was, I was brilliant. With brilliant. Having, I got lost a lot of times. How the hell we got, how we, we got found you. Uh, we found you eventually. Yes, I know. Did you? <laughs> yes, did. I'm still looking, you know that? Yeah, yeah. I think your voice is very distinctive, right? If you were, uh, you know, barking a, a commander, a PA voice on Bond films or anything, I could spot you immediately if you'd done extra looping or something later. Yeah, I got my lines right by then. <laughs> He's been looped a lot lately. Thanks. <laughs> Matt. All I remember is David saying, shut up, Matt. That's all I remember. <laughs> not enough, not enough. <laughs> See, see that? Um, dear Peter. I, all I can, the thing that I get asked for Alan all the time is FAB father. I, <laughs> very good. I used to say that for some reason an awful all lot. All of a sudden you're 21 again. Right? I can't go up that high as I used to be. <clears throat> FAB father. F, or, or He's still there. Thunderbird still three, there. Uh, Thunderbird three uh, calling uh, Scott, come in, you know, that thing. Or very stay good. out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, Judith down there. We're um, leaving you out. Do you remember any lines at all that you <laughs> No. You she was no. too busy. Busy <laughs> doing the work. You were doing the work, yes, in that little room at the back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I know. Wonderful, Judith, that room. We talked a little bit earlier about it, but what was, the, what was it like on, uh, on Thunderbirds? Because all of a sudden there was a much bigger crew, wasn't there? A bigger family. Hundreds. Um, yeah, only, uh, only a couple more puppeteers, though. Really? Yeah, it was mm -hmm. well, mainly the model effects crew that expanded, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that being like that, Mary? Oh, we haven't got a microphone for you. Do you remember? Do you remember the, the the crew expanded? There were a lot more model makers, but was it essentially the same yeah. amount of model uh, puppeteers? Well, there were a few more uh, puppeteers. Mainly makers of puppets, I think. Right. Because there were more characters were, were brought into the episodes as it went along. There you go. Okay. What are you doing what after you? this? <laughs> <laughs> Running, I think. <laughs> the thing that uh, I think impressed everybody, I remember the first time I went back into that little room in Slough where you did all your work with the puppets and everything. I got, and they were doing, a, they had like a dining room table size and everything. It was happening on that little dining room table. Mm -hmm. It was just unbelievable. You people were just... And then when we saw it on the screen, it was amazing. Yeah. And you people were doing that. I think that was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, well done. You yeah, know, yeah. absolutely yeah. wonderful.
They I, never allowed me enough to come in and see you, though. <laughs> they kept me away from you. <laughs> oh, Mary. That and the court order. Um, <laughs> any more questions? Over there. <coughs> Got the microphone. There we go. Kind of a question for both cast and production. There were sometimes in episodes where a character, the voice actor, would suddenly change. There was occasion in The Vault of Death where Shane Rimmer was doing a very good British voice. And yeah. suddenly... Was he? It, it, it was very good, yes. What are you accusing me of? I, I, uh, acting. Well, acting. Oh, acting. <laughs> <laughs> there was it no was, acting going on. It was on. so good he recognised you. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly it would change from Shane Rimmer to being David Graham. Is, was that possibly a, um, a mistake during the recording of the voices, or was that possibly a limited amount of puppets being used during the filming? Oh, that's Have a I tricky asked one. A trickier question. A, a, a tricky one. I mean, I used to... Well, I mean... Ray Barrett and I... Obviously, other people did. We shared a lot of the visiting characters, so I often found I was talking to myself, you know... <laughs> It's, Even not it's, like, it's like the joke <laughs> in, in a stage play when a, a character asks another character and he says, what do you do? He says, well, I'm God. He says, how do you know you're God? Well, he says, when I pray, I find I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It was probably down to sort of late dubbing or something or maybe they recorded separate characters and then merged it because they only had one puppet, who knows? I, what, what, I think a lot of your answer is probably lost in the... What did he actually song. mean? I really didn't <laughs> understand what you meant. Well, I think there was one secondary character that got voiced at different times by different voice artists. What? Who, who, who did that? Well, I don't know whose fault it was, but... <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me, I wasn't there. I was at home. I mean, you mean it's a bit like when David Holliday left the series, that the voice was taken over by Jeremy Wilkin, is that what you mean? Oh, that did happen. That was later, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean in the Pacific episodes, just where one character would have two voice actors. I'm merely asking, do you know any reasons why that would have occurred? Or Well, sometimes we played well, three or four characters, different characters in the scene. Actually, I don't actually... think one character, would, if one character would have two voice actors doing the same character. They were always separated out. Yeah, that sounds like a mistake at the editing I, yeah, stage. No, so, yeah. Have we got anyone here that knows anything about the editing on Thunderbird? We didn't make any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> he, David, do you know what he's talking well, about? I, I, can't, I, I can't remember it, but as I directed it, I feel a bit ashamed. I don't <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, you've, I mean, made, had, look, you've made him blush now. Yeah. We had episodes, a couple of episodes where David was talking to himself, but they tried very much to not to let that happen. I mean, because otherwise you get very confused about who the hell am I, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and especially you. But no. Yeah, so. <laughs> so basically, uh, no, we did, you know, what we did used to, we had to double up. That's all there was to it, you know. Did any of you guys get to go to the opening of the movie? Say no. what? There was a big, sort of, you know, glossy, glamorous evening opening. No, I was working. Of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I was working. No, I didn't. No. Yeah. Did you go? Oh, what's it? They had the band oh, playing at the, the beginning yeah. or something. You mean the yes. Thunderbird? The Thunderbird the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I went there. You did. Under the Royal Marines there. Yeah, this is what, this is what Mary yeah. was saying earlier. Yeah, yeah. that was very London impressive. London Pavilion, yes, as it right. then was. It was a cinema. Yeah. Yeah, and it was quite a, a glossy affair. Yeah. 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 I wore a tuxedo. <laughs> 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 or I should say a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that Parker was serving the drinks. Well, maybe that's no, just... No, that's no, anyway. yeah. <laughs> Any more out there? A lot of we got? There's somebody over in the middle there. Hello. Um, obviously, you've all played your characters really well. Was there anything that you specifically want... <laughs> Hello. Um, was there anything you specifically, during this series, wanted to see your character do, such as, I don't know, Shane, you wanted to see Scott up in Thunderbird 5, or Alan maybe at the control at Thunderbird 2? Was there anything that you would have loved to have seen your characters do? Were you that invested in the characters? You had ambitions for them? <laughs> well, Gordon oh, was yes, stuck up in much. space. Mm. He, he couldn't move, really. Gordon was just oh, circling God. around. So he didn't have an opportunity to take over any other craft. And um, Parker was, he had the roller and nothing else. I think if they made it now, we could have a little more action with Tintin and Alan. 
<laughs> a bit like Captain America, you know. But, I mean, there is, the, the, uh, the, maybe you'll shoot me down on this, but there was a story that they used to hang up Alan on one side of the studio at night and Tintin at, Tintin at the other, and to get up in the next morning and Alan would be over there. <laughs> we never found out who did it, Mary. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't you. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> We've got another one down here. Where's Liam over there? <coughs> here he comes. Uh, Viennia, do you remember the reason why Virgil, uh, uh, David Holiday, couldn't continue his role as Virgil in the second scene of the Thunderbirds, and why Ray Barrett couldn't Ray take Barrett, part in Ray Thunderbirds Barrett. 6? Jeremy, Jeremy Wilkin took over. Yes, I know. Why? Because uh, David had better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he went to Broadway to appear in Man of La Mancha. That's a pity. Yeah. Yes. And so what about Ray Barrett? Why couldn't he take why part Ray in... Why Ray Barrett? Yes, why couldn't he take part in Thunderbirds 6? Oh. What? Ooh. Ray Baird went back to Australia, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, what did he? Why? Well, there was no ISDN. Well, lines he was going to get stuff. taxed over here and he wanted to get off fast. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, you can do nice. voices down the line from anywhere in the world, but I guess if he had gone abroad, that was yeah. pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, in those okay. days. Thanks. Okay. That's all I can tell you. Anybody else? Liam, I'm going to get you running around again. In fact, do that one while you're there and then we'll go to you, sir. Um, uh, I was just wondering. Um, uh, other than the characters you portrayed or helped move machinery and stuff, or directed, um, other than those characters that you are particularly probably fond of, who was your favourite characters? Uh, which character? characters were your favourite other than your own? <coughs> Ned Cook. <laughs> I loved Ned Cook. Yes. <laughs> yes, well, yes. Oh, yes. Mm, yes, I'm Terror in New York. <laughs> I remember that one, you see. Yes, yes. Hello, everybody. Ned Cook here. <laughs> yes. And the question was, which characters did you really like, apart from your, Bartolo. obviously, your own? Well, I just like the whole... <coughs> uh, you know, I couldn't choose any, but I just like the whole setup. I mean, mm. you know, we were a team, and I think we were part of a, an overall creative team. And I loved, uh, I loved the whole lot. Mm. You know, I loved all the characters I did from the word go, you know. OK. Shane? Ah, I must have been asleep through a lot of this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just say you like Parker. Oh, I love Parker. <laughs> Everyone yeah. loves Parker. He got yeah. into the most extraordinary adventure. That I think the one who would have been uh, really uh, mentioned here would have been Ray Barrett. Yeah. Playing the Duchess. Oh, that was lovely. Yeah. 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 Because they tried to get Christine Finn to do it, and she couldn't do it, and, uh, and uh, there, there was just no way anybody, anybody else. And suddenly Ray Barrett said, I think I can do it. I can't do the voice. <laughs> and he did it. I mean, I, I don't think I've, I've ever laughed so much. No, he was brilliant. It was brilliant as the, the Duchess. But <laughs> not In the casino. 17 black? Yes, that's right. From Ask. It had the whole wobble in it. Yeah, it was very good. Now, there's one at the back there, Liam. If you're gonna... Liam, could you also fetch that jacket? <coughs> I've, got to show, I've got to show folks this. This is hilarious. <coughs> She's getting thinner and thinner, that boy. Yeah. Well, you get, <laughs> that's my son. It's your son. <laughs> yeah. Hiya. Um, There's a question for Shane. Um, you've been in Thunderbirds, which has obviously been around for 50 years now, but you've also been in Bond, which is also 50 years. Yeah. Um, have you any good memories of Roger Moore or any of the other Bond films you were in? <laughs> mm. What, that I can tell the public? <laughs> <laughs> I think Roger was the most delightful co-actor I ever worked with. He genuinely felt that he was about the luckiest guy in the world. He was doing something he really loved to do. He was in the sort of company he loved to be in. Uh, the only trouble with Roger was he tried to break you up at least five times during the day. Uh, it, was, it was his delight to be successful in making you... He didn't have to work very hard with me. I just took one look at him and I blew up. It was <laughs> terrible. It was terrible. Well, this, but I tell you what, there was quite a difference. Because uh, I worked with Connery, and then later with, with Roger Moore. Connery was a tremendously talented 
presence. He, I remember coming out of a lift the first time I had a scene with him. Uh, I'd only seen him in bits, pieces before, but all of a sudden he looked like King Kong. I don't mean it, you know, as a character, <laughs> but he was big. He had a presence that not many actors acquired during the course of their uh, careers. Roger really didn't care what happened. I mean, he had that great face. He had a beautiful voice. And, uh, and a wicked sense of humor. And a wicked of sense of humor. And he just charmed his way through his career. He, and w which is not uh, saying he, he was without talent. He had an immense mm. amount of talent. But he made that floor work. Mm. A, a leading actor can either make things a bit miserable and tight, and everybody forgets their lines and forgets where they're supposed to be walking to. Roger just sort of paved the way. Every time he was on that floor, he made it easy. Because all of a sudden you had a group of actors who were striving for something. Yeah. And they wanted to make it good. And all the, all the tension and all the uh, pretending went out of it. Mm. I mean, characters all of a sudden become real people. And it's because of this, this generosity that, 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 uh, that he had. He was an immense. Uh, he, he, to, to me, he was just a, an extraordinary talent in a lot of ways. Well, I, worked, I did work with Roger Moore, but for four, he, he, he got the Bond part, and he did a series called The Saint, and I happened to play in one of the episodes. And we used to eat in the restaurant at, I think it was Elstree, mm. and the sort of the executives were up on a dais, you know, apart from the Hoi Polloi. Mount Olympus. And he walked into the restaurant, Roger, and he, looked, he took one look at the director sitting up on a dais, and he fell on his knees, and he... He, he went on his knees all the way to the days. <laughs> and I thought that was typical of the man, because he knew he was the star, yeah, you know. Yeah, sending up the buses. And they laughed, they yeah. laughed a lot. <laughs> he was great to work with. Yeah, he was. I never worked with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he never worked with you. I know. I mean, well, I, it was they'd, warned, they'd warned him about difficult, it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Difficult working with him. Yeah. Um, we're here today, obviously, to celebrate lots and lots of different pieces by Jerry and by Sylvia and that. But um, the, I, I managed to get hold of this. This is a prototype. I thought I'd bring it along today for the Thunderbirds uh, fans to see. And uh, it was a prototype. There's only three of these made. And I thought, it didn't look too bad, you know, it was a bomber jacket. It was about 20 years ago. Um, not too bad until I looked on the back. And I thought you might find this quite amusing. <laughs> show, show me. It's, it's not particularly good likeness. I think it's meant to be Virgil. But, but no, 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 it's him. <laughs> it's Scott. It's supposed to be Scott. But he's got Thunderbird 2 on his head. Oh, yes, I know. But uh, anyway. It's like Scott. But it's got that. But Jerry, you know, Jerry turned this one down, apparently. So that's Did why the, there was only three of them made. But uh, again, and you've if got, anyone, if and anyone you've wants got. to come and have a word with me afterwards, if they've got deep <laughs> pockets. Um, we're here to celebrate Jerry. I'd just like uh, if any of you would like go down the line and just uh, reflect upon Jerry Anderson. Well, we've got to finish the panel in a minute. Um, any particular memories, a personal memory, Mary, <laughs> about Jerry? I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, I really had more to do with Sylvia than, than Jerry uh -huh. because she was uh, um, doing the characterisation of the of the puppets. So I w didn't really have that much to do with, with Jerry himself. Okay. All right. David. Down the, no, well, not Dave, the other David down there. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's quite all right. Oh, no, um, they're starting. It's <laughs> beauty. My, my memories of Jerry would go back to the really early days when he was a dubbing editor and I was, I was his assistant. Yeah. And the fun that we used to have, especially down the pub. <laughs> But I know he was very much at home in the editing <laughs> room. That's, that's where it all began. That's where yeah. it all began. And yeah. Judith, any particular memories to do with Jerry? I can remember we were making, we were doing the uh, title scenes for Stingray. And it's the very beginning shots where they zoom into um, Cat the, um, Commander Shaw. Commander Shaw, yeah. yes. And so they had to get this special zoom in and they got it in on a Friday evening and we had to work and do it and it was me Mary was up t up top and 
um, we had to wire the, his wheelchair and then pull it and they, I was pulling it and they were zooming. So the zoom didn't work, the string broke. And 25 takes later, <laughs> Jerry wasn't a happy bunny. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. <laughs> it served him very well, definitely. Uh, David Graham. Well, I mean, probably you may have heard this story. I first met Jerry on a TV film, and um, it was my lucky day because, you know, you have to have to survive in this business great pieces of luck. And when we got talking between takes, you know, and Jerry told me that he was hoping to make animation series, I said, well, I'm not bad on voices. And true to his word, uh, got I did in. five series, and I remember him saying to Arthur Provis at the time, when I was sort of around, I've got total faith in David, and I've got his book, which is about me, and there's a beautiful dedication of what I contributed, and that's a treasured possession. And you know, he did a hell of a lot for me. He, mm. he almost enabled me to stay the course, yeah. you know, because I was able to sustain myself while waiting for other acting visual work yeah. on, on the work I did for Jerry. Lovely. Mm. Shane, any personal <coughs> memories about Jerry? I think I became aware more and more of Jerry's sort of perception about actors' voices. Mm. Uh, and so I began to look at this and see, and there was no actor's performance that I ever saw where the sound of the actor's voice typified the, the, the person he was playing. Mm. He, he somehow had this incredible sort of uh, <laughs> Perception, I can't think of another word. And it, it's very comforting to have an audience listen to a voice and actually believe that that character is speaking it and speaking it genuinely. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have to work a hell of a lot to, to, to do this. He seemed to be able to put his finger on the kind of a voice that would express what he wanted to hear and what the audience wanted to hear. It was quite... I think he's great Impressive. skill was assembling a good team, yeah. yeah. And Matt? Uh, most of my time was spent with more with Sylvia uh -huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> than with Jerry. Um, I, when I first met Jerry, I, have to be, I, I hadn't met him at the beginning at all. I met him through, uh, Sylvia hired me. Um, he scared the shit out of me. <laughs> what Much, was I, was very, I don't know, he was very tall. And I, I have this impression he always had a cigar, but I don't know whether he did or not. Sometimes I, I think he did. Yes. I think he was emulating Lou. Yes, I, has, I have this impression. I can see him be in the control room with the cigar. And we, be, we, we had three mics and Slough that we used to work. And we'd be working on a script, and I could see him in that thing. And if, if he suddenly went down and we said something, that's it, I'm fired. That's it. You, you know, know, he was the he, boss. He scared me. But then we had a lunch one time, and we, they used to do, remember, they used to do salad and stuff out on the, on the outside. And we were sitting there talking, and he told his joke. And um, that changed it with me. I, from then so on, he was fine. He was fine. Yeah. And uh, I, I just thought he was a man ahead of his time as far as everything. When you think some of the things we're using today, they were, he was prophesying in Thunderbirds, you know, the, the phone, the, the everything. Oh, well, we have to wrap it up now. I'm going to say it was an extraordinary piece of work, which many people still love today. Future audiences, a new generation is going to discover a new version of Thunderbirds next year. But for now, for the original lineup for Thunderbirds, please thank all our guests. <laughs>what a lovely bunch and nice to hear Shane yes. on his voice again yeah, of course yeah always nice always he was smiling throughout that and uh, I should add which you obviously can't hear that there was a, a lovely standing ovation at the end of that panel um, ah well, I'm not surprised yeah. yeah lovely to hear them talk isn't it yeah yeah it is nice and you know moments that can't be recreated now
Ah, uh, yes, but we have them. We have them. Yeah. We have those moments, don't we? We can so play them again. So nice that they've been captured. Yeah. Um, and right. we're very That's happy right. to share them with you, Podsterongans. Indeed. Maybe you were there for Andagon 2014. That was a Heathrow, wasn't it? The first yeah, one. it was. A Heathrow. Uh, maybe you were there. Yeah, get in touch with us if you were there. Give us your memories, your, your thoughts. Maybe you were in that uh, very um, question and answer session, an interview. Maybe you were one of the people we heard from at the end there. Yeah, if you were, let us know. the panel. Yeah, yeah, be lovely, yeah. Very nice. Uh, now, I've got a few more comments just before we move on to Chris Dale's amazing randomizer, of course. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, to everyone for posting those pictures for, for Jerry's birthday on Sunday. It would have been 90 on the 14th of April. Uh, and we did ask a few, uh, if you would kindly post a picture of a, maybe raising a glass of something or perhaps showing your favorite Jerry Anderson toy or a bit of merchandise and hashtag it, uh, cheers, Jerry Anderson. Uh, Trevor Random on YouTube, of all places, says, uh, fab fact, my birthday was also the 14th of April. Oh, OK. Uh, and I told your dad that when I was lucky enough to meet him on the set of Space Precinct. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, Thomas Skidmore on YouTube says, Derek Meddings was a true genius. I loved his work on the 89 Batman film. Uh, and we've got a little review on Podbay that I have to read out. This is from Deep Sea Dawn. I'm sure I was at school with someone like that. Uh, said, <laughs> love this podcast. As a lifelong fan of the worlds of Jerry Anderson, even as someone who grew up in the Hawaiian Islands. Oh, wow. Fun, engaging, and enough of those uh, for those of us who started with these worlds from the beginning, as well as for the new generation. Thanks for that, Deep Sea Dawn. Yes, cheers, grew Deep up Sea Dawn. in the Hawaiian Dawn. Islands and managed to watch Jerry Anderson. Amazing. Yes. It is great, isn't it? You keep discovering that it's, it's you know, you, yeah. you think of kind of the major territories like, you know, US, yep. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Yep. Uh, Italy, France, maybe, but then you you, you hear yeah. it spread much wider. It's uh, it's awesome. That's right. So thank you yeah. very much for those reviews. That's right. It's lovely. Yeah, we often ask who's the furthest person to be listening, don't we, to uh, to our podcast? We know you're all over the world, and a couple of pods back, you read out some stats to, sh to let us know exactly where people were listening from. So we know that we have an international audience, which is lovely. Exactly. But That's we're still lovely. waiting for the. Uh, you know, intergalactic or interplanetary we are. Uh, audience. We are. So, yes. You know, yes. Do get in touch if you're listening to us from from the stars. From the black hole that was discovered. This oh week. yes, from that lovely that lovely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It looked a lot like the black sun um, thing from Didn't Space 1999. Yeah. So yes. predicting the future. Um, That's right. So fantastic. Uh, now the when we had our vote about listeners' favourite parts of the podcast, Richard. Oh yeah. The second favourite was uh, yeah. was Christelle's randomizer, wasn't it? Uh, and um, it's hardly surprising. Yeah. So, should we just, you know, let the audience get into their second favourite bit? Yeah, I think we'd better give way, really. Okay. Here you go, Chris. Good luck. Wheel him in. You join me today on Tracy Island, on the trail of that most elusive of creatures, the lesser-spotted Kirano. Jeff Tracy's faithful manservant was the very first member of International Rescue we ever met. And yet, by the end of Thunderbirds, he was almost nowhere to be found. There are some who say he now roams the jungles of Tracy Island, mumbling the same three pitiful words to himself over and over. Have some coffee. <laughs> oh, sorry about the tray, but... Oh, please don't do that. I could not help but hear your words. What exactly are you doing? Oh, yes, well, um, this is awkward. I, I was looking for you, actually, but I guess you were also looking for me. Uh, why exactly? I have felt a compulsion to come here and watch you work. Ah, well, that's not creepy at all. Uh, w what does that do? Oh, what, this? Oh, this is the randomizer. It's used to select Jerry Anderson episodes. Uh, randomly. Ah, uh, would you like to try it? Oh, uh, thank you, sir. That's it, big red button right there. There you go. I had a message, but I find it difficult to remember. Ooh, was it that you've secretly signed over Jeff Tracy's entire fortune to me? Yes. Perhaps it was. Excellent. The old hypnosis is still working well. Right, let's see what we have today. Oh, well, a very good selection, if I may say so, Kirano. That is good news indeed. Hmm, we're back with Fireball XL5, but in high definition and colour. It's a day in the life of a space general. Oh. Kirano? Oh. Uh. Kirano? No! No! Oh, come on, it's quite a good one. Oh. OK, Venus. OK, Steve. Right. Let's go. So here we are back for some more Fireball XL5 and uh, I have a feeling Fireball XL5 is going to be um, 
to 2019 what Joe 90 was to 2018 on the randomizer. This is what the fourth we've had in three months, I think, from Fireball, having had nothing up to this point before. So, uh, yeah, probably going to see a, a few more Fireballs coming along. As, uh, well, something needs to take the gap that's been left by um, having already done like a sixth of Joe 90 already. Um, but here we are, day in the life of a space general, and I am watching this in the beautiful uh, high-definition colorized version that was uh, produced by Legend Films in 2009, released on Blu-ray. doesn't make any difference to anybody listening to this because, uh, yeah, you're not listening in color. It's a very, uh, I don't know, is, 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 is a podcast in color or is a podcast in black and white? Answers on a postcard, please. Lieutenant Ninety, wake up! Uh, oh. oh dear. So our last fireball was uh, Flight to Danger, which was another Lieutenant Ninety-centric episode. I said there it was nice for them to spotlight a minor character, and uh, here we are with Day in the Life of a Space General, where it's it's happened again. It's another Lieutenant Ninety-focused episode. This time, uh, focusing on his training for. How do you expect to become um, a bachelor of space if you can't stay awake? Yeah, that, that's what he's training for. But you've got to be alert, on the ball. Oh dear, the uh, HD close-ups on these uh, XL5 puppets are slightly disorienting. Possibly because I am seeing them in colour, which I'm not used to. Um, yeah, now we're further away from them. That's Drawing better. I've had to do for the exams. So this episode, I first crossed paths with um, on the tape trading network actually in the early 2000s this was um, broadcast I think somewhere on, on ITV in the 80s and I can't remember who it was who provided me with copies of all the unreleased Fireball XL5 episodes that uh, had been shown on I think it was Central was showing Fireball XL5 in the mid 80s um this episode was also shown at the very first convention I ever went to, which was, I don't know if, if anyone out there remembers Junior Branch of Fanderson, um, Fab, I don't know what it would have been called, Fanderson Junior, Fanderson Kids, whatever, they had a, a Thunderbirds Fun Day in Margate with uh, screenings of various episodes, mostly the first and last episodes, but they did have a few episodes of shows that weren't currently being shown on the BBC. There was this and um, uh, Recall to Service from the Secret Service and uh, um, Play It Again SRAM from Terrorhawks was another one. But it's looking much nicer on Blu-ray. Blu-ray and in colour. What it's like to be shouted at. So, I mean, obvious, obvious lead into a dream episode here. 90 has gone to bed. Thinking about how nice it would be to be able to Order everyone around and tell everyone what to do and, uh... Oh, we've had a dissolve to a dream and now we've had, you know, where the screen goes doodly 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 and now we've just had another one doodly 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 so that, that should mean that he's out of the dream. It doesn't, but, uh... Oh, you can see the, the, um, mould line on, on 90's arm. The sun's shining and I feel on top of the so, world. Right. Quite weird. I've never noticed that before on, on any puppet, I don't think. Good happens. Sounds like the mailman's called. Now, some people have, have said that that mailman through the door there, um, who you can't quite see, some people think it's Mike Mercury. I I don't think it is. I would like it to be, but I think it's the um, captain of the space liner from um, uh, Space City Special. <laughs> 90 has just cheered, fallen over backwards in his chair, and uh, we've got a very strange close-up of his um, <laughs> of the underside of his bare feet. Again, it's a lovely sort of touch that uh, 90 is just so dedicated to his job, and even creeps into his dreams. Oh, oh, here's uh, Eleanor Zero. Is this the first episode we've seen with Eleanor Zero in uh, Commander Zero's wife? Um, perhaps answering the question why there are no wives and mothers um, prominently featured in any of the Super Mario Nation shows, why they're always dead. If uh, Eleanor is the sort of the idea of 
that people who made these shows had had that the the wife and mother character could be. Uh, I'm I'm probably grateful that we didn't get any more like her. <gasps> Four Feather Falls clip. Yes. Um, I think that that's uh, Red Scalp and a couple of his pals about to ambush the train through Four Feather Falls. Ah, I don't know what's got into your father in the mornings, Jonathan. I love things you like sure that. I wish there were more them. more shots of characters watching older shows. I heard him say he didn't want it. Boy, is he in a sour mood today. Yeah, this is the domestic bliss of the Zero household. Uh, gives Lieutenant Brogan a run for his money in the uh, uncomfortable family life, I think. But, oh, here we go. 90s put on his full general's outfit with, with medals. General 90, sir. You're a good man, Jack. A credit to the World Space Patrol. Oh, it's very good of you to say so, sir. I like the way that um, David Graham has pitched 90s voice slightly deeper in this... Leave it all to me. This general 90 persona that uh, mm -hmm. our former lieutenant has taken on. Oh gosh, another close-up on the uh, scary, scary puppet eyes. But, but, it's a lovely HD transfer, this one, and the colour... It, the colour does have a slightly artificial edge to it, but it also suits... suits a Super Marionation show, I think. Thinking aloud, sir. Well, and considering this is ten man. years old already, do as you're told. I'll a, it still looks very good. But B, I would love to see what they would what, what they would be capable of now. Ooh, lovely shot of the underside of XL5 taking off there. Quite a rare rare shot that one. Probably because you can see that the front of the launch rail that XL5 is mounted on, there's very little of it there. There's like three inches worth at most. XL5 free of Earth's atmosphere. They wouldn't get very far on just three inches of the launch rail. How about some coffee, Venus? General 90's left a kind of dry taste in my mouth. General 90 to XL5. Yeah, instantly. As soon as we get into space, oh, Venus can make some coffee. It's not like she has anything else to do. You know, she's not a doctor or, you know, has any scientific duties that might need attending to. No, woman, make the coffee. That must be the 79th time he's called. I'll be glad it's an interesting uh, thing to do with uh, taking a minor character and imagining them, uh, having them dream themselves in charge of the whole world of whichever show they inhabit. I'd, I'd love to imagine other characters having similar dreams. Uh, obviously, Lieutenant Fisher being very, very close to um, Lieutenant Ninety, and with regard to his role in Stingray, you could imagine him dreaming himself in charge of Marineville. Actually, I would love. I would love to see Colonel Magenta in charge of Cloud Base. Oh, that would be something. Earth is about to be invaded. Sound the Well, that's okay. That's happened before, and all you have to do is sort of wait around on the floor, and the uh, the um, racially insensitive aliens tend to, to collapse, pass out, in fact. All personnel report to emergency station. And this is, going, again, going back to the colorization of this episode, you can see elements like this, of this fire engine and a lot of the background stuff in Space City, there wouldn't have been any color reference for. There would have been color reference photos for like shots of the main characters and Space City control room and stuff like this, but nothing much for those other things. And again, I, I just think, wow, they did such a really good job with this. General. I'm surprised, really genuinely surprised that nothing nothing more has been done since this. Aside from uh, you know, the obvious fact that it takes a long time and is probably very expensive, probably even more so now than it was when this was made. Um, that, that statement is based solely on hearsay, by the way. I don't have any actual hard financial evidence to back up that claim, but uh, hopefully as time goes by, stuff like this might start to get easier, I don't know. Anyway, we're now on the uh, vacation planet Olympus, um, and this is actually a return visit to the planet Olympus. We, we were here for space vacation. Jump for it, John! I can't hold it! Let's take a tumble. 
And this uh, is also the first episode of Fireball we've covered with uh, with Jock in it, the um, Scottish engineer who turned up in, I don't know, maybe a third of the series, possibly half. He was a very nice nice character to have around. Again, um, predating Star Trek, we have a, a chief engineer who is Scottish. And amazingly, this is not the only um, cult TV show out there to have a a Scottish chief engineer. I think um, the man from Uncle has a, ca- a Scottish engineer character called Scotty in an episode again that predates Star Trek. Very strange. Get going, Jock. Hurry, I'm sinking fast. So Steve has fallen into this uh, quicksand bog type thing, and uh, Jock is having to haul him out on a rope. This is a. I've always found this a quite an odd sort of detour. Remembering that this is all 90s dream. I hope I'm not spoiling anything for anyone there. Uh, I, I know dreams can go off in all sorts of random directions, but this just seemed kind of like an odd time filler moment for, for 90 to be dreaming about things happening to other people um, when he's not there, if that makes sense. Although I, can't, I guess it kind of fits in with his whole dream of, you know, the brave, heroic commander gets taken down a peg or two by being rescued by the uh, the, the Scottish grease monkey. The whole of Earth is in deadly danger, Zero? I guess I'm okay now, Jock. The important thing is that Jock got through it without getting any mess on his kilt. Because of course he's wearing a kilt, and his suitcase is covered with labels of Scottish places. But what happened to the invaders? I also like, uh, going back to, to David Graham's portrayal of 90 throughout this dream sequence. He starts off with that deep, heroic voice. learn something from this, Commander. Which he's just slipped back into there, but at moments of panic, the older 90 was starting to slip through until finally, at the end of the dream, he is completely... his regular, regular performance. He's a very clever man, is David Graham. Tell them, uh, uh, tell them uh, to... Uh, May I suggest they stand by and we get a tanker to them, sir? Uh, that's quick thinking, uh, Zero. Uh, you, you, you're improving. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, get, a, uh, get a tank. Oh, David I'm Graham again. This is a real control. real tour de force for David Graham as 90 here. Oh, OK. Uh, command a Zero. Losing uh, more and more of his cool and composure as more and more. You know, not things going wrong, not yet. Just um, things that require attention. Uh, come in, XL5. So we have a bit of a situation developing here at Space City. They've just launched a tanker to fly off and refuel XL29. XL5 is uh, coming in on a landing approach. And uh, there's also a freighter looking to land, I think. Freighter A14 is using that pad. Sounds like a recipe for disaster. And the the, the tanker has just been launched from the same area. Uh, What are we going to do, Commander? It's your show, General. You're the boss. So for a reason that's about to become obvious, this episode was, um, if not the actual last episode filmed, the model sequences. And, yeah, I think the puppet sequences in this final sequence as well would have been some of the last filmed. Precisely because... Do something, Commander Zero. They're all about to be destroyed. For real, and proper, and actuals. All these wonderful props. Okay, not the tanker and the um, the freighter that we've been watching. Um, that have just... Yeah, there they go. Bang. Um, but Fireball, our actual... Crash. Fireball is about to crash into actual Space City. The whole place has gone up in flames. Oh no. Yep, explosions in the control room. Uh, Commander Zero! What have I done? Yep, they are just blowing up everything, trashing the whole lot. Commander Zero, help me. And it is quite sad, even though, as, as I've said, Fireball is not one of my favourite shows, even though I loved it as a kid. That shot of. XL5 colliding with with Space City and, and just watching them go up in flames knowing that that is the end of those models for real. I mean, oh gosh, in that shot you could... Yeah, Fireball Jr. is just about intact but the rest of the model is just this smoking pile of 
wreck. Crazy nightmare. Oh, I've been... I've been dreaming. It's a good job they, they knew. Well, I'm presuming they knew when they did this that they weren't going to be making a second series. It would be a bit of a inconvenience for them if they uh, got recommissioned. All a dream! I'll apologise. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. He was right to bawl me out. I love this back and forth um, sort of morning routine thing with uh, cutting back and forth between zero and 90 both sort of saying oh well i was i was uh, i was wrong and i'll apologize it's such a nice way to end this episode um each of them wanting to to be genuinely sincerely apologetic to the other and it just sort of spiraling out of control into this like no i'm more sorry than you don't say another word it was my fault and again, this so far on, on re rewatching Fireball, it's the relationship between these two characters that I found most most entertaining so far. Oh, and of course, the XL5 crew for real weren't actually in this episode. It's, these are the only two characters who actually appeared in this episode for real. If I'm sorry, I've got the right to say so. Well, I'm sorry, you're sorry, because I'm going to make you so sorry, you'll be sorry you were sorry. Oh, that's lovely. That's a lovely way to end uh, a day in the life of a space general. Um, as I said, an episode that I knew about for quite a while before I ever actually got to see it. Um, a very a very good idea for a dream episode, I think. And sometimes dream episodes are just like, oh, gosh, no, 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 no. You know from this one going in that it's a dream, it's obviously not real, so you can have some fun with it. Uh, I do think... The fact that Zero and Ninety don't actually get out of the control room is maybe um, a point against it. And that detour on Olympus with, with Steve and Jock doesn't really amount to much um, beyond a, a nice little nod to a previous episode that they returned to a planet they visited before. However, yeah, I... I I think I do have a soft spot for the dream episodes where it all goes wrong at the end and everybody dies and everything's destroyed. Made even more poignant by the fact that that, oh, that was the real Fireball XL5 and Space City going up in flames. Oh well, if it wasn't flames, they'd have all been chucked in a skip. I feel like we've had a lot of Fireball XL5 recently. Yeah? Well, wrong with not that? recently, but, you know, over the time, that's what kind of yeah. it's skewed a bit more towards that. However, isn't it interesting... Mm that Chris named this episode as one of his top five dream episodes. Yes. We spoke about that in the news earlier on, and here it is. But it's not, a randomizer. Not only that, but because it's the colorized episode, it's the one that Network took a few years ago, did nice HD scans of, fully colorized, right. and right. then put it out on Blu-ray. If you want to pick a copy ah. of that up, you can get it from the Jerry Anderson store, shop.jerryanderson.co.uk. Nicely done. I would highly recommend. It's, it's lovely looking. Yeah. But what do you think about colorized episodes, Richard? Ooh, should, should, I don't you, know. should you tamper mm. with something which mm. was shot in black and white, which was, you know, designed the whole world and the color scheme that was used, although it was painted in color, it was designed yeah. to work in a black and white yeah. world. So should we mess around with that? Well, you see, that's exactly what I. I'm not so sure. I think it should stand almost as a historical document, really. Mm. Um, I'm, what I do like is I'm all for um, the sort of um, the uh, the reconstruction of perhaps episodes of things that ha are no longer available mm. because tapes are wiped and so on, using, you know, tele snaps and animation and so on, because that's perhaps the only way we're ever going to get to see these programmes. Yeah. But, I don't know, taking it something that was originally filmed in black and white and colourising it, it's a bit of fun, I suppose. Yeah. But I mean, they, I they would have shot it in colour if they could have done. True enough. Like they did with Stingray, yes. you know, colour colour yeah. film technology became available and yeah. they pushed the boundaries and decided, right, we're going to make it in colour now because they really wanted yeah. to. So yeah, yeah. That's right. You know, is it? Yeah. I mean, what I would really, really like to see mm. is a little um, uh, kind of mini box set from someone like Network. Well, it'd have to be Network. A colorized yeah. for, um, Four for the Fools. Oh, yeah. A colorized Supercar episode and another okay. colorized Fireball XL5. A little right. trio of, you know, the monochrome brought, yes. brought to life or brought yes. to life, rather. Yes. Uh, it'd be quite nice to see. Anyway. Uh, what do you think of colorizing episodes, Podsterons? Mm. Would you like to see some mm. colorized apps? I'm talking to Network all the time about new stuff they could do, uh, and yeah. if there is enough demand out there, then there's a good chance you know we might be able to get a couple of apps done, possibly. So email us yeah. podcast at jerryanson.co.uk. We are listening, and we will make sure that Network listens too. Absolutely right. Yes. Or else. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, of course. I've never seen you like that before. Um, uh, another quick couple of reviews just before we say goodbye. Uh, this one is from uh, Peak N, and this was left on uh, on Pod Bay. It says, some of my best memories as a kid were watching Thunderbirds on TV. As an adult, I've collected DVDs and replicas to attempt to keep those great memories alive, and now these podcasts are the icing on the cake. Thanks. Oh, that's nice. And I've kept this one for last. This is on iTunes, uh, only because I like the, uh, the username Pudpuller. Pudpuller. Uh, it says Richard and Jamie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Richard and Jamie, uh, or Jamie and Richard, plus Chris, have become compulsive listening every week. I love the banter between the guys, which regularly has me laughing along. I'm a huge fan of the late Jerry Anderson's work and grateful to Jamie for keeping the legacy alive. Can't wait for Firestorm. Ooh. Cool. Really glad to hear that. Thank you very much indeed, Pud Pud. Lovely. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> the, user, the usernames on the reviews are, are quite often fantastic. So know, we've got Deep they, Sea yes. Dawn and Pud Puller. They're sort <laughs> of uh, superheroes from a, an unmade Jerry Anderson adventure series. I would series. hate to think what his superpower might be, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm, interesting. OK, let's not uh, dwell on that too much. But yes, no. thank you all for your reviews. We really appreciate it. If you would like to go and leave a review and haven't already, then we would, well, we'd be ecstatic, wouldn't we? Yeah, cool, that we would. Yeah. Over the moon, so, cock a hoop. So, <laughs> So if you'd like to see Richard James cock a hoop, then uh, please go and leave a review. Uh, we'd love that. <laughs> oh, well, well done, Jamie. I think we made it through another one, didn't we? Just about. Uh, just about, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'd love to hear from you, so drop us a line. Podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. Tweet us, as Richard has previously instructed. And, um, yeah. I've got some interesting interviews coming up. I, I've, I've been struggling for time so much. Uh, yeah, recently okay. there will be some new ones um, but we've also got all that lovely archive stuff to draw and in fact I'd love yeah. to know do you prefer the archive stuff or the new bits and pieces you know do you like hearing from celebrity fans do you prefer archive recordings do you like a bit of analysis do you like some biographical stuff like we did with the tribute to Shane Rimmer I'm mm -hmm. keen to hear what your preference is um, yeah, interesting. Because it will inform what we do in future podcasts so there we go indeed so yeah great right Richard lovely. you've got to go to your audition yeah, I've got to go and be a zombie. Um, I've got to drive to a secret location for yes. something else secret, and then I'll be doing another fun thing on the day of release. Goodness me, it's all go. Uh, so until <laughs> pod 45, mm. have a fantastic week. And we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. One complete. Let's go. Spectrum is green. secret location I'm going to is also the location of your audition, Richard. It would be weird. And I, I yeah. go through the security uh, gates and see you there with your arms out in front of you, yeah. head cocked to one side, dribbling. <laughs> well, just like any other day, you mean? Well, I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. I and that's how I recognise you, recognize you, obviously. You, you? <laughs> <laughs> Richard! <laughs> no, well, I, I hope the audition goes well. I, well, thanks. I have no doubt that you could absolutely just... Well, grab that role of uh, you know a uh, deceased well, uh, brainless uh, thing you just yeah, yeah I think I could probably do straight that away well. yeah you can do it in your cast sleep. again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right I know my agent did say that they should look down the casting brief and it had someone who looking for someone who's tall slim and angular well I I mean that's me isn't it I mean I, I well just give it to me now I don't know anyone taller slimmer or angular -er, so um, and, and also with my complexion they'll save on makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Pasty James. Excellent. That's what they call Well, me. good luck. Uh, and uh, let me know how you get on. Oh, I will. Right, I better get my um, slurping noises ready. <sighs> uh...